Spoilers for Stardew Valley. It may not seem like it, but the world of Stardew Valley is much more rich in lore than you think. There are mysteries and secrets that can be uncovered, history, and wars. There are four main factions or races in the world of Stardew Valley. The Junimo, the Shadow People, the Dwarves, and the Humans. A little bonus is that there are also aliens. Stay tuned. The Junimo are mysterious creatures with a language that seems only the warlock understands. However, I used a phrase that he translated to get a rough understanding of the Junimo alphabet. If you are fast and take screenshots at the right time, you can catch the Junimo speaking after you finish bundles for the community center. I've translated the ones I could get and got some help from others from their screen grabs. They're hard to get because the game is so long and you always forget to record. Okay, just... Okay, just... It seems like most of the time they say Junimo, Star, and a gift. I think the squiggly line is supposed to be an exclamation mark or something. I'm sure if I was able to see all the words they were using with each bundle, it might be something that makes sense together. The shadow people can only be found after a lot of work. Most likely your first encounter with them will be deep within the mines. They are dark creatures that simply walk towards you and cause damage if they touch you. There are other factions of the shadow people, but killing them results in them dropping a void essence. Simple monsters that are just there to be killed and looted, right? Wrong. If you happen to bring 60 items to the museum to display, you will be given the key to the sewers. Inside is a friendly shadow person by the name of Krobus. He explains that his people attack you on sight because they have a bad history with humans, and he apologizes for them. He says, have you encountered others like me in the mines? I'm sorry if they were hostile towards you. You see, we've learned to fear humans. There have been too many unpleasant encounters. I mean, there is a guild right next to the mine that rewards you for killing creatures in the mine, shadow people included. If you befriend him, he also says his name means bridge crosser in the language of the shadow people. He also can never go outside in the sun, which is why he and his people stay deep underground. Additionally, Krobus stays silent on Fridays to honor Yoba. Yoba is sort of a deity in the game. You can see people worshipping Yoba at Pierre's shop on Sundays at what looks like a church. There is also a ring of Yoba that can be crafted that will give you some pretty good stats. It's ironic that the shadow people worship Yoba as they are killed by light, but Yoba is a creature of light. There is a book in the library that speaks of Yoba. Before time, there was only the endless golden light. The light called out to itself. Yoba. Yoba wanted more. Yoba swirled the golden light into a vortex. Yoba swirled and swirled until a hole formed in the eye of the vortex. From his hold sprung a seed. Yoba smoothed the golden light. Yoba smoothed and smoothed, and the light became soil. Onto this soil, Yoba planted the seed. The seed sprouted, and behold, a vine sprung skyward, twisting and probing, casting a writhing shadow onto a golden void. After 11 days, the vine bore fruit. Yoba, with knowing wisdom, peeled the tough skin of the fruit and saw that the world was inside. And so that is how the world came to be. Interesting. Then there is also the dwarf, who is an enemy of Krobus. If you befriend both of them, you will enter the sewers and see a standoff between them. The dwarf says that Krobus' people killed his family, something Krobus is sorry about.
The dwarves were once a great race with lots of technology. Some of it even still works today. However, the dwarf you befriend does not know how it works, as much of the dwarves' knowledge has been lost to the time. Long ago, my people knew the secrets of advanced technology. The archaeological evidence proves that. But I wonder where it came from, and where did it all go? I guess some questions will never be answered. Yes, dwarf, that is a good question. Where did your technology come from? Well, it's aliens. No, it isn't, Mario, that's stupid. Yes, it is. It's aliens, and I'll prove it. Again, you all never believe me, and then I prove it, so just sit down and listen. There are three pillars in the desert. Those three pillars have a hint to them. If you go to the graveyard, there's a tiny gravestone that has to be translated from Dwarvish and says the following. Stand between the pillars three, with gift as precious as the sky, a rainbow forged from land, not sea. Then galaxies will heed your cry. What they are talking about is the prismatic shard that can only be found deep underground with creatures or veins that drop iridium ore. Iridium ore is also found in meteors, making me think the origin of iridium and the prismatic shard is not from the ground, but from the sky. If you give this prismatic shard to the pillars, the entities of space or something will give you a super cool sword. How is it that the dwarves had technology that communicated with space? Because they are aliens. No, they're not, Mari. Yes, they are. Let me finish. The desert mines had a lot of Egyptian influences, which is often associated with alien conspiracies. No, no, don't, don't go yet. After seeing all this evidence, I thought, yes, this is very possibly aliens, because there is also a cute alien Easter egg in the title screen. Look how cute. Aliens confirmed. And then I found this book that you can find by digging around. Mysteries of the Dwarves. The dwarves call themselves Smaluanu, which translates to Sky People. An odd name for a group that lives deep underground, isn't it? Another mystery of the dwarves is the advanced technology they supposedly possess. Evidence such as this has led me, despite the ridicule of my colleagues, to propose a new theory. I believe the dwarves are the remnants of a once advanced civilization whose interplanetary vehicle crashed on this planet long ago. I propose that this dwarvish spaceship bore down deep underground, and over time, the dwarves became adapted to their new underground environment. My colleagues ask, why didn't they come above ground and live on the surface? Perhaps their old planet had a thicker atmosphere that protected them from stellar radiation, and they simply could not survive in our sunlight. That would explain why they only surface at night to take what they need from our houses. M. Jasper. So, with all that evidence, yes. The dwarves are aliens, and their ship crashing deep underground and them having to live underground explains why they went to war with the shadow people. Krobus said that the dwarves forced them from their homes because they had to fight over underground living spaces out of nowhere. Without the ability to communicate at first, the ship crashing probably very much looked like a violent invasion. You see, I'm not crazy. It's aliens. And the dwarves who have lived to this day have long forgotten their past. Maybe all the magic in Stardew Valley is not actually magic. It could be dwarven technology that we've all forgotten how to use. Grandpa looks like he's floating around in space when he comes to yell at you from beyond the grave. Some other magical elements are also of alien technology. For example, the star drops that make your energy go up. According to a book called The Secrets of the Star Drop, for thousands of years, people have been intrigued by the mysterious powers from the star drop, but no one knows where they came from. Professor R.J. Cutler, a lead researcher on strange fruit, says this, We have discovered traces of genetic material on meteorites that closely resemble the star drop, but it's not a proven match. Regardless of where they come from, the peculiar fruit is said to be uncommonly delicious, and some even claim they grant special power to those who eat them. Since the Junimo seemed to mention the word star a lot, maybe they also come from the stars. Everything is alien. Ironically, it is harder to learn about the world of humans than any other race. There seems to be some sort of war going on for unknown reasons, causing thousands of soldiers to die. It is implied we are at war with a place by the name of the Kotoro Empire, which might explain why the traveling cart lady sells her stuff at such a steep price. She says that she is smuggling her items from the Kotoro Empire, although she might be a spy because sometimes her items end up being bombs. Our country is called the Ferngill Republic. If you befriend Sam in the first year, he confides in you that he doesn't know if his father will return from the war. Luckily, his father does return, which makes the family happy. 
I'm sure there are other secrets in Stardew Valley that have yet to be uncovered. The developer has said so himself. So keep searching, keep being curious, and you'll be rewarded.